As many viewers are well aware, all those troubles with the T last year have prompted a closer look at its finances and management. And some of that is coming from the Pioneer Institute. And joining us from Pioneer is its Director of Government Transparency and Director of Finance and Administration, Mary Connaughton. Thank you very much. For Thank you for having Mary. me. First of all, you looked at a particular thing that's been going on with uh, the T here, and this involves the use or the stockpiling of sick time. Exactly. Back in 1975, through a collective bargaining arbitration ruling, T employees were allowed to bank their sick time if they don't use it. You know, in many organizations, if you don't use your sick time by the end of the year, you lose it. But at the T and throughout government, typically, you're allowed to accumulate your sick time. And the T handles its accumulation of sick time very differently than it than other state workers handle theirs. So we try to do an analysis of what that really means. Well, uh, for state workers, you, you can bank some of your sick time, but um, let's say you're extremely healthy and you don't need it. Uh, I guess you lose some of it, too. Well, well the way it works with, with state employees, they accumulate the time that they haven't uh, used, but at the end of their time of service, whether it's retirement or otherwise, they're allowed a payout of 20% of that sick time at their current rate of pay. So what we want to do is compare what that amount is for a state worker versus what it would be for a T worker. And the benefit that the T worker gets is they get this annuity, it goes forward because it adds to their pension significantly. So what we did was we took, we looked at like the average uh, salary at retirement of like around $80,000. We, lo we looked at what the retirement board used as an example for how many sick hours a person would have. And they used an example of 150 days at retirement, 150 days that they hadn't used. We wanted to see what that really meant. And to back up, back last May, we did a public records request of the T to try to find out how much time had been accumulated by employee. Well, the T denied our request, first of all. They said, you know, that's, that's personnel information, you're not entitled to that. We said, that is public information. We went to the Secretary of State's office, Secretary Galvin ruled in our favor, and then the T had to provide us with this listing. And when we saw the amount of, our, of days on that listing, we said, wait a minute, this is going to translate to an enormous liability for the state. We looked at by employee, did the uh, addition, and it turned out there were 380,000 days accumulated as of the end of 2014. It's a lot of days. Our next step was to determine what the differential is for the value of a sick day between a T employee and a state worker. So the state worker gets the one shot, 20% payout versus a T worker, assuming that they have 150 hours and they're at 85, um, uh, $80,000 $80, and they're going to live another 25 years after retirement. It turns out that the state, the state employee's value per day of sick time is like 63 bucks. The MBTA's uh, value is $192. So we took that differential of $129, applied that to the 380,000 days outstanding. We said the differential is $49 million between what the T state would pay versus the amount the T ultimately pays out during the course of these retirees' uh, retirement. So um, it, it, is this is maybe $49 million over maybe, what, 20 years? Are we talking about 49 per year? No, it's, a, it's over the course of these, the average retirement. So we're looking at the, you know, the pension fund of the T. The pension fund is enormously underfunded. Up in, in 2008, it was 94% funded. It's down to 69% funded. So there's hundreds of millions of dollars in unfunded liabilities for the team, meaning that they haven't put enough money away already to pay for their retirees. So where is that money going to come from? You look at the T finances, we find out you know, half of its money comes from us. Never mind fair collection, something different. It comes from the state, a billion dollars a year, roughly comes from the state to subsidize this T. And even with that, they're still not funding their pensions adequately. There's all these uh, reasons you know, why the pension fund is so un much underfunded, but part of it is we have these, the, the T has some generous perks for its employees. 
So we're basically looking at the difference between you know, the one-time payout of the state per employee versus what over the course of the life uh, of these retirees, the, you know, the T or the state through subsidy would be paying out, and it's significant. Well, I, I can see one benefit from being allowed to stockpile so much sick time, and I guess that's you would show up for work more often, wouldn't you? Well, I think, th I think that's what the Carmen's Union says is a good justification for this, but for most people, if you, if, if you don't show up for work, there's much more serious ramifications. You know, if, if, if you're not feeling well and you're dealing with the public and you have a cold or potentially the flu, you should stay home. You shouldn't be using those. You shouldn't. Be, you know. You should be using your sick days, not showing up for work. But still, if if that is the incentive, is the if the carrot is so you could pad your sick time at the end of, of your uh, time at the tea, that seems to me a pretty odd carrot to be dangling out there. How do you fix this? Because it sounds like you, you well, you know, there's always a next contract, but you know, a, you know, a, a union's not going to be eager to give much ground on this. No, this has been going on since uh, 1975. And our analysis was just at looking at current employees, never mind those that are already retired. Um, the issue is that when T's management brings this into arbitration, typically, or it can go into what's called final and binding arbitration after go through a mediation process and they're not able to agree on contract terms. It makes its way up through the process and goes into final and binding arbitra arbitration. So an arbitrator decides on what these benefits are going to be, what the total compensation package is going to be. And historically, the, the T's management has been, hasn't done so well in binding arbitration. And so because of this, it makes it really difficult to change a benefit once it's in, to take it out. Governor Baker, when he made proposals to try to fix the T after last winter's you know, debacle, uh, he one of his proposals was to eliminate this final and binding arbitration so T's management could take a look at all these contract provisions and see what can we really afford. But because of the process, they're unable really to have enough flexibility to, to effect a positive change in terms of trying to save some money for the taxpayer. You, you may be curious about one more thing. Once you came out with this information, the, the people at the Fiscal Control Board uh, say, oh, we already knew that, or thank you very much, we didn't know that. We hope, we hope it's a thank you. We hope it's a thank you. We haven't heard directly from them, but we hope it's a thank you just to show some of the things that are going on. And we're going to be looking into a lot more of the finances of the T. We're not, stop, we're not stopping here. This is just one aspect. We've looked at you know, maintenance cost of buses, and at the T versus the rest of the country, and when we compare our maintenance costs to you know, our peer organizations' maintenance costs, we're like double what other transit agencies are paying. So there's a lot. Of the salaries at the T are much higher than many of the peer groups that we, we're looking at, and we don't even determine the peer groups, the peer transit agencies. There's an organization that is federally funded that determines you know, what the peer organization, what the peer transit agencies are for. For, uh, tra for these um, transit services. Thank you very much for being with us. Okay, thank you. It's always a pleasure. From the Pioneer Institute, Mary Connaughton. Thank you. And we'll have more news in just a moment.